This weird looking PCI card is actually an early SSD, and the way it works is absolutely wild. So stay tuned. And if you enjoy exploring bizarre bits of e-waste, I hope you'll consider subscribing to the channel. This is the fabled Gigabyte GC RAM disk, aka the iRAM from early 2006. It's a PCI card that takes four sticks of desktop memory and turns them into a super fast SSD. Now you might be thinking, hey, isn't RAM volatile? Why yes, which is why this card takes the absolutely wild step of using a rechargeable battery right on the board to keep power flowing to that RAM so your precious data can persist, until the battery dies at least. But why, you may ask, would anyone choose such a convoluted storage device? Speed. You see, in 2006, every consumer PC sold was pretty much guaranteed to come with a slow, spinning hard disk drive. True SSDs as we know them today were still in their infancy and very expensive. A 32 gigabyte SSD would cost $1,000, which is over $1,600 in today's money. Stupid inflation. This goofy iRAM card only cost 140 bucks, plus the cost of the four RAM sticks. Was this a good idea? Well, Newegg still has historical reviews on this bad boy on its long defunct product page. The top positive review loved using it as a super fast scratch disk in Windows XP. They even put a virtual memory file on this thing. Smart. The top critical review, well, apparently their battery was defective. And they only found out after taking their PC to a LAN party with critical Windows files completely lost. Ouch. Anyway, today we're going to draw our own conclusions by sticking this thing into a period accurate Pentium 4 build, installing Windows XP on it, and seeing just how fast and reliable this thing really is. Right after this quick word about today's sponsor, PCBWay. PCBWay is a one-stop solution for all of your PCB assembly and fabrication needs. Do you need to prototype something? Build a run of a project? I bet PCBWay can handle the whole thing the whole way through. PCB prototyping starts at just $5 for 10 pieces with as little as a 24 hour turnaround. And boy, do they offer a lot of different options. Flex PCB, Rigid Flex, HDI PCBs, and they even offer PCB assembly, which starts at just $29 for 1 to 20 pieces. They even offer stuff like injection molding, sheet metal fabrication, and more. Right now, there's a PCBWay mascot design contest, where you can create a 3D model of either the PCBWay official mascot Eon, or a totally unique character. Win up to $500 cash bonus. So for everything from prototyping to 3D printing to full-on mass production, I hope you'll give PCBWay.com a try. Now let's take a bit of a closer look at this card because it's pretty simple but pretty weird. Of course we have a battery here. The card didn't come with the battery when I got it. I found this on Amazon. We have our four sticks of memory. These are 512 meg sticks. So unfortunately we only have two gigs to play with. We have a SATA connector right here. Don't need power, just data. Power comes through here and through here. Capacitors look pretty good for 2006. No signs of leakage. Looks like we have some status LEDs on the side here. Right here we have a Zelenix Spartan XC3S1000, which is an FPGA. FPGA, of course, being code for Field Programmable Gate Array, otherwise known as MAGIC. On the back here we do have a JM2330, which is a serial ATA bridge chip, according to the internet. There's also a suspicious red button here. Wonder what that does. I guess we'll have to find out. Now, as I'm sure you're aware, I am far too punk rock to be bothered by things like putting computers into a case. So we're just going to drag on this thing here right on the desk. This is a Pentium 4 of some description that has SATA connectors on the board. And we'll just go ahead and put the battery in here and hope it works. Plug this into PCI and hilariously put a SATA cable from the card to the board. Look at that. Fun. 
Later on, we'll try some real funny business like trying to use this definitely not homemade and totally fine USB to SATA adapter to try to mount this as the world's most convoluted USB flash drive on a modern PC. But before we potentially ruin it, let's see if we can get Windows going on this thing. Okay, now you all pay close attention to these status LEDs when I power this thing on to make sure it works. And I'm just gonna have to jump the power connectors on the board to start this. All right, let's see here. Boot device priority. Oh, that's it, look! It's the Gigabyte iRAM, it sees it as a boot device. This thing lives. And looking at these LEDs, I think it's even charging the battery. All right, I guess we better try to install something to it. We'll use my totally legitimate version of Windows XP Home. All right, let's do a standard Windows XP install. There it is, unpartitioned space, two gigabytes. That's our four sticks of RAM. Pretty weird. Let's see how fast this formats. Oh my God, that was incredible. Hopefully jump cut to Windows XP. All right, and we are installed. Look at that. Booting into Windows XP Home installed on four sticks of RAM. <laughs> so far, pretty normal. Uh, my computer and I've put in a USB stick with crystal disk mark. So we can take some benchmarks. Kernel 32. Oh, we need a newer version of Windows XP to run that. Son of a gun. Before we install that, let's see just how persistent this data is. We will shut down the computer. The light is still on on the RAM disk. I have now unplugged the computer and there is still a light on on the RAM disk. Plug the computer back in. And I assume our data is still intact. Yep, booting Windows XP. All right, battery has been removed. The light is now off. Restore power and I assume all of our hard work is gone. Yeah, it is just that easy to lose all of your data with this thing. Okay, battery is reinstalled. Let's do a quick XP Home SP3 install so we can use our benchmark software. And jump cut to install complete and Crystal Disk Mark is perfectly happy. Oh my goodness, we're using 88% of our RAM disk. Yeah, let's, let's tone this down, 128 megs. Let's run some benchmarks. And jump cut to benchmarks complete. Now let's compare those to this very nice Samsung 870 EVO SSD, a modern SSD, which would have been ridiculously expensive in 2006. And something more common in 2006, this MaxTor SATA 5200 RPM hard drive. Okay, so interestingly, on the real Samsung SSD, read and write sequential are about the same as the iRAM, probably because it's maxing out the SATA, but random read is much faster on the iRAM than it is on the real SSD. Look at these benchmarks for the spinning hard drive. That poor Max Tour, <laughs> that is dreadfully slow. Look at these random read speeds. Ridiculous. And I think that was the real power and allure of the iRAM back in the day. Despite being janky and slightly dangerous for your data, it was orders of magnitude faster than a spinning hard drive. Okay, now before I attempt pushing this very tempting red button on the iRAM, we're gonna do something extremely cursed. Unplug the computer from the iRAM, plug it into this super janky cable, which is SATA to USB. Doesn't need any extra power, it's getting that from the PCI bus. We'll just have to turn on the computer and then let's see if we can read the iRAM as if it were a USB disc. All right, powering up the computer solely for power to the card and plugging it into USB. Oh my God, there it is. There's our iRAM card over USB, the world's most convoluted USB flash drive. I've done some cursed things in my day, but this might be the cursedest. Okay, let's push this red button and see what it does. 
All right, we're going to do it while it's running for maximum potential hilarity. And I did download the manual, so I could just look up what this button does. But this is much funnier. Maybe it deletes everything. Maybe it does nothing. Ha! Uh, well, according to the manual, that button is just the battery capacity indicator and not a delete everything or reset button as I secretly hoped. Well, this thing is pretty neat, if not immediately useful today. Yeah, the battery indicator does work. Although, I don't know, what would you use this thing for in 2025? Let me know in the comments below. Maybe something like Linux swap space for a super memory constrained old system. In any event, thank you very much for watching. And I just want to give a very special thank you to all of my Patreon supporters and channel members. Thank you so much, each and every one of you, for supporting me and supporting this channel and all the weird stuff I do. I am so very grateful and I just could not do this without you.